On April 23, 1975, 11-year-old Karen Owansu decided that instead of delivering flyers after school, she and her friend Shelley Campbell would dump them in the river valley that bordered their southeast Edmonton neighborhood. According to details in a story by Pamela Roth for the Edmonton Sun in 2012, upon entering the woods near McNally High School on that early spring day, Karen and Shelley came to a steep embankment they chose to slide down. Karen went first, keeping her bundle of flyers intact as she reached the bottom, but Shelley tripped on the uneven surface, spilling her flyers all over the ground. While Shelley was busy picking up her flyers, Karen walked off deeper into the woods, despite her friend's pleas to wait. Here's what Shelley Campbell said to reporter Pamela Roth back in 2012. I cried out to her. Here we were, being partners in crime, and all of a sudden she's walking away from me? I called to her a few times and she wouldn't even turn around. She didn't acknowledge me, she didn't do nothing. It was really bizarre. Shelley gathered her flyers and went looking for her friend along the main path towards the Dawson Bridge, but she had no luck in finding her friend. So she quickly returned to the location where the pair were separated. Shelley was spooked by her friend's sudden departure. By this time, my hair is basically standing up and something is telling me, okay, this is really not good. At the top of the ravine was a classmate sitting on a bench and Shelley asked if he had seen her friend. Still in shock, she went home and kept the events of the afternoon from her parents, hoping she would hear from her friend soon. Shelley went to school the next day expecting to see Karen in class, but Karen never came back. Less than a day after the two friends had wandered into the ravine, a runner found Karen's tiny body just off the well-used footpath. She was lying face down in the woods, and her clothing had been ripped from her body during a vicious sexual assault. An autopsy confirmed that Karen had a massive skull fracture from the savage attack. Investigators believe the attacker used a thick tree branch to deliver the fatal blow to the young girl's head. And because of her severe injuries, dental records were used to confirm Karen's identity. Police investigators believe the killer lived in or near Forest Heights in McNally in the 1970s. A $40,000 reward remains in this case. <laughs>